Hey guys, how are you? My name is Shannon Aller and I am better known as She's Crafty on YouTube. I wanted to pop in and show you some goodies I get to play with. They're all Maker Forte goodies and I cannot wait to jump in and do this video with you guys. So the first thing I have is this Happy Halloween printed paper pack and I will go through the papers. They are bright and cheerful and colorful, and they have this really nice, smooth, smooth texture. Let's see. Oh, and guys, look, double-sided. So if you don't need bats, you've got yourself some goats or ghosts. So, gosh, I don't even know which ones I like more, but I'm going to go there. I've got a gray with a black polka dot. It's kind of a grayish, though. It's got a little bit of a taupey vibe going in. And then we have little... Uh, little skulls and potions. Happy Halloween is repeated on a nice little ombre. I've got all of these cute little jack-o'-lanterns. They are adorable and cute and I love that you're getting some of the pink and the orange with both of them. This is a super cute collection. I've got pink ombre into orange on a nice little check and a stripe. This is gorgeous. I mean, all these like almost like bluey pinky tones and stars and a nice little animal print. I have got a nice little watercolor. So super great for, you know, backing all your photos and all of that kind of thing. And some batty bats. I have bats going oh, this way, this way. I don't think it matters. And an ombre again. I'm right back to my ghosts. So these are repeats. So we get two of each and I think they're awesome. Now I have the Maker's Forte, Maker's Magic. They are a glue, they are dimensional. You can mix them with goodies. I cannot wait to play with them in both clear glitter and white pearl just because I wanna play with both. I love the idea of a little sparkle but I also like a pearly kind of vibe. Super great there. Oh, and I'm going to use that with this square stencil set. Look at the little bats on there. And we have little witches hats. I think it is super cute and absolutely perfect. I believe it's called hats and bats. There you go. And then finally, for some inks, these are Color Hive inks, water reactive, smooshable ink. I've got Bubble Tea, which is a fab name. I've got a nice bright one, which is outrageous I believe and then finally I have pit stop pink so I am going to be making a layout today because I'm a scrapbooker foremost so I thought I'd show you the photo I get to use I have this photo here these are my boys this is Mason and this is blue and this is blue when he was a puppy looking terrifying as a little lion and we're just gonna pretend he's going raw. So I have that going on. So since I am a scrapbooker and I prefer to use 12 by 12, I have a nice thick sheet of cardstock. I have some gesso on it. And I don't even know what kind it is because I gesso up a bunch of pages all at the same time. So they're at the ready. I don't think it's incredibly carefully gessoed. And I think that's okay too, because sometimes I like actually all the time. I like the imperfection of things. So what I'm going to do is get out my stencil, which I am digging this stencil. And guys, I don't know if you have their stencils, but they have such a nice thickness to them. They're sturdy, which is an awesome thing. Feeling this too, because I always like to see about packaging. It's a nice inky black packaging. Yeah, I know. I like all these things. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and move these goodies aside for now. And I want to try both of these because I love them. And I'm going to run them through the stencil, let it dry. And that's how I'm going to get a bit of a resist. I may, you know what I should do? I think I know I'm gonna do it, yeah, I wanna do it a resist and do some ink blending. So I think that's gonna be my best bet. So I'm gonna be a little generous with the amount that goes right on my glass mat. I have 
I always film on my glass mat pretty much because I like to, ooh, that sparkle is <gasps> the bee's knees. It's iridescent, it's sparkly, it's, it's all things that are good and happy. It's true. Um, I want to be able to have the ink blending and going everywhere. So my t technique that I am to use is using, using Maker's Magic glues with inks to create resist and mixing techniques. Awesome. What I think I'll do is get my, oh guys, we have such a thunderstorm going out there. My handy dandy, very loved spatula. And I'm doing kind of a central design with this. I think I want to use lots and lots of my pattern papers because I'm smitten with them. So I'm going to do a bit here and a bit here. And I want lots of pattern papers to be able to be used so we can see all of the gorgeousness. So the long and short of it is I'm going to be kind of ish with it. But I want to use both. So we're just going to go for it and see how they dry. I cannot wait to start getting these through here. Now, I do have, like I said, gesso through. I'm, now I'm gonna go in and grab some of the cool sparkly kind, it's the clear glitter. I'm going to use both on this because I want to. Um, I'm going to let this do a really nice dry so that when I go ahead, ooh, I love it, oh my gosh, guys between the pearl and the sparkle, good things are happening here. So when it dries, I will be able to allow the inks to kind of blend and pool wherever they so choose as we go. I think it's going to be a fab project. So I'm gonna keep going through this. I will show you when I've got all of this great product on here. I think I got a little bit of stuff that was on my spatula on it. So I am sure that this will not, oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, I don't know how well it's gonna photograph, but I have both the pearly bits. This one right here, the white pearl. You can see the pearl, but you can also see the difference in the Glitter. So I'm going to keep going with that. I'm going to pop some here. I'm going to pop it down here because I want to play with a lot of it so I can really spread my color around. Give me a moment. I'll be right back. All right, I'll take a look at how pretty this dried. We have pearly bits and sparkly bits. Some are mixed. It's okay. If things are a little goopy, it actually makes it all that much more interesting. So what I want to do is grab my pit stop pink color hive ink and give it a nice little smooshy. Oh, that is awesome. Then I'm going to grab my bubble tea and oops, do the same thing. Come on. And it's water reactive, smooshable ink, and then a little bit less of the outrageous because it's super super orange and i'm trying to use some things that are a little tiny bit more subdued if we need to add more we will and give everything a nice little bit of water we can always add more as well may i'm trying to decide how i want to do this but i do have one of my very favorite tools called a baggie and i think i'm going to start by just doing a little bit of a color blend and see where I like the sweet spot for my ink colors. You can get so many colors if you just blend your own. And I'm just gonna start smooshing them on. Now I'm gonna add more. I can take it away because I have gesso and kind of decide what I like. Now I'm not gonna just leave it like this. I'm just applying it. I just thought I'd see how I felt about it. Now, I'm gonna get a lot more water on there. So I think I want to bring in a little bit more of this orange than I thought. Although I do love this pinky variation, variegated pink. I'm going to go ahead 
just grab some of that water and kiss it a little bit with some of that orange. So we're getting that really good suggestion of that color, but I'm not necessarily wanting it to be this bright. So in a second, I can go in. Oh, I like that. Guys, do you see how the sparkles are really starting to show because it's doing this great resist with our ever so fab Maker's Magic, guys, this stuff is the bomb. The bomb. Okay. I want to make sure I get it everywhere, but I don't need to cover absolutely all of it because I like how it kind of has this vibe like it's fading out as well. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of water because I want to be able to move it around just a little bit, get a little bit of drippage, just a little bit. I think I might hit it with a little bit more of this pinky tone, this hot, hot pit stop pink. I love that the orange is totally vibing with this so nicely. So cool. So let's get a little bit more over there, over there. I'm gonna say that I don't need it everywhere and watch me just get it everywhere. These things happen. It's a building kind of thing. I could use a paintbrush for this as well. I just saw this next to my desk and I said, all right, I guess that's the one. Getting a little bit more of that outrageous orange tone on here. Now I will let this dry and let it air dry. And it's entirely possible. There we go. That's why we use gesso. So if we have a hard little edge that we're not vibing as much, we can just move the color around. So if I want it a little bit deeper, if I want whatevs, I still will be able to move it around because I have this done with a little bit of gesso. And I'm using my very favorite tool called my hand right now. But you can see already how we're getting this beautiful resist because we used our Maker's Magic through our stencil. Love it. And see how it's kind of pooling around the little stencil Betty Bats and, and the little witch's hats. I love it. I'm going to totally let it air dry. I'm going to come back in a little bit and see what I'm thinking. You know, I thought I'd come in before it fully dries and use a paper towel to see what it looks like if I just soak up some of the areas. It's all just about playing with it and seeing what we like. And it resists so perfectly. See how I did that? Like totally comes right off of the Maker's Magic. So awesome. Okay, I just thought I would show you what I was looking at there. I wanted to see how it would react and it is a beautiful product to work with. The Color Hive inks are fab. So let's take a look at this. It has dried beautifully. I think I wanna get some more of the bubble tea in here. Love this color. It's kind of got this little mauve -y vibe to it that I super dig. So what I think I'll do is just give it a couple kisses and get it wet and let it start moving around again and let it, oh, yes, that was a color I was looking for because if you look in this pattern paper collection, it kind of picks up that tone. So I thought I should bring in a nice amount of that. I love where it's going, but it's just part of the fun of mixed media that you just let it decide what it wants to do. Let's go like that too, because yes, this is what, I wanted. I'm going to also go ahead, be a little bit risky, and give it a couple kisses of my outrageous ink. But guys, seriously, card making, scrapbooking, all of the things, it is so pretty. Let's get our hands in here a little bit because I want the orange to be blended, but, but, I also want to have some true orange on there because, you know, it's a Halloween layout. Okay, I'm really kind of happy, happy, happy with that. Maybe just because I love color so much, 
I will give it a little kiss here, little kiss there. And yes, I know it's super pigmented, but it blends so pretty. And then I'm gonna let this dry all by itself. Now, the very cool thing when you're using this as resist, you know how there's some ink on top of our stencil work? It will wipe off beautifully with a baby wipe. Let's see, isn't that pretty? There we go, just a little extra of the pinky pink. Tiny bit more of bubble tea, and we are going to turn this into a scrapbook layout before you know it. Just go ahead, use our fancy tool here, you know, fingertip. Maybe out a little bit to bring in that batty bat up there just a little bit. And this is ready to just get left alone so it can dry. Love how this has come together. I know you can't fully, fully see it because we have so much water on it, but it'll be fab before you know it. Hey y'all, so this is dry and I wanted to show you how fab the pooling is around all of my die cut bits. I'm sorry, my stenciled bits. So what I'm gonna do is create a nice little surface on a paper towel to wipe just gently off some of my little batty bats to make them pop out just a little bit more because the ink will resist right off of them. I mean, it has for the most part, but it lets me just make them pop a little tiny bit more. See, pops right off and lets it gleam that much more. I'm going to go ahead and come in with the inks again, just adding a little bit of splatters, splatty bits, whatever you like to call them. And this layout will be ready to decorate. But I am so digging this background. Pretty cool stuff, huh? All right, so let me get some inks. Going to have, oops, oh, way too much, way too much. Guys, I love this color. And just clearly, since I've done way too much, a nice little smidge there. I literally just, there it is. I was like, where is my sprayer? And I like to use cheapo paint brushes for splatters because for some reason they work so well. There we go. See, this is like one of those like 10 for a dollar dealy O's. Just going to come in, do some nice splatters with all three colors, and then I will meet you right back here and we will get this layout decorated up. So I have a plan. What I'm going to do is back the outside edges of this piece of like cheapy white cardstock with my gorgeous pattern papers because quite frankly, I wanna use tons and tons of patterns. Now I'm gonna reserve this piece for right now. I just want to get happy Halloween cut out. So I can either go super orangey or this like orange going into pink. It's all like it's touching into peachy coral. I'm thinking like this to bring in more orange, but we'll see. So I'm going to use that for the outside, but let me show you my piece right here. And this right now is 12 by 12, but what I think I wanna do is get some tearing going and I'm gonna just let it tear almost where it wants to around the design or around the uh, mixed media work. I think that might end up being a fun way that we can showcase lots of the pattern papers, right? But we can also get all of our pretty mixed media work gets to still be the star of the show. So kind of square, but rather messy too, which I like both of those things. And when the time comes, we can scuffy, scuffy, scuff. So let's put this aside and let it dry a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. I was thinking, what if we have lots of these patterns kind of on angles? Well, this is already an angle, so I guess that would be fine. Oh, the pumpkins. The pumpkins have to be shown. 
did I get, oh, and I knew, 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 knew I needed this pattern. So, ugh, but I want this one too. What are we going to do? All right, so maybe I'll switch this one out for this, or I can break them up a little bit. And you're like, this is the messiest thing I've ever seen. But we'll go like this in the center, and I'm going to trim all of those edges. Okay, in my head, this looks good. So give me a moment. I'm going to start getting these pieces down. Let's see. I think, I think, I think that this is going to be a thing. So we definitely know we need our animal print, correct? So let's go ahead and move that up. I'm just going to get a little adhesive on it. And after I trim everything out, I can bring in way more adhesive. I'm not that concerned about it. So we're going to go like that. And all I really want to do is make sure that this will cover that background piece. So I probably will need way less than I'm even thinking right now, but I'd rather put on too much than too little. So I'm going to go like that. I love the little scullies and the potions. So that definitely needs to be part of the party. And then these little stars are so cute. Oh, it's the opposite of this. And guys, the leftover pattern paper I can use to make cards and all that kind of stuff. So this, this is going to work most definitely. This piece is beyond hilarious and adorable. And then thinking this one right here needs to be tucked in just, oh, just a little bit. See how these are kind of all going boop, 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 boop. So maybe this to this and this to this. I'm thinking kind of like that. And I'm trying not to be too incredibly liberal, literal about it because I'm going to go ahead and trim around these outside edges. We will pop this on top and I'm thinking popping it up on a little dimensional adhesive and I'll be right back. Guys, I'm so excited with where this is going. So I cut out my title, which is perfect. And I like that little shine on the paper. It gives a little something. Here's my torn out bits. And yeah, they have to go this way. Here's that mess of papers that I was talking about. You put this on top and it clears the whole situation up. Now, originally I was looking at doing this on the black, but I think I'm gonna put a nice little bit of white around it so we can see those papers just a little bit more and then pop them down. I think it makes it have a little bit more zhuzh and yeah, you can just, for some reason you see the papers that much more. I have my photo, which I need to mat, and I wanna cut out a bunch of these cute little pumpkins for my die cuts. So it's gonna take me a second to do that, but I'll meet you right back here. So I've spent quite a minute cutting out all of these cute little pieces. I've got these little potions and I have little pumpkins and little scullies and even the little bubbles that I thought were so cute. Then I used a little tiny punch and punched out a bunch of the stars. So now we can start getting our goodies decorated. The only thing I have left to do before doing that is I want to mat this photo a few times. So let's see. I really like this strong black contrast. So we're going to start with that. I think it is so fun and so cute. And I'm wondering if I should do just a little bit of tearing around these pieces. I think I'm going to do that to mimic the tearing here because everything else is rather squared off. So I'm going to want some looking a little bit messy. And as you see here, I use the same paper that I went ahead and cut my little pieces out of. I mean, I cut my pieces out of different scraps and all that. I just think that they're so cute. And if you have a nice pattern paper, you can end up with lots of little die cut bits. And that is too fun. So I'm going to layer this up with a few different patterns and I'll meet you right back here. So I think we can start decorating. I have all of these fun little torn bits on my photo. And I also went ahead and put some dimensional adhesive on the back. So let's get the photo on and we'll start decorating around it. I think that should be our best plan here. Get the world's oldest T-square ruler. I'm going to put the photo just offset a bit because offset and down. 
I think what I should do is not go around the torn bits, but actually go around the square of the photo itself because, yeah, who knows how the torn bits ended up. Okay. Right about there should do it. I've got a nice little happy Halloween that I think I want to pop up along the bottom. So I originally had the whole thing popped up. So I have some very messy dimensional adhesive going that I now have to cut in half because I'm gonna have part of it on top of the uh, photo cluster area. All right, let's work on this. Now let's see, it goes like this. So I need the bottom done. And then making sure I even have enough sticky bits available after I tore that right off. Okay, guys, this is just stinking cute already. Maybe because it's a puppy photo. I don't know. Okay, I have that. I have all of these great little die cut bits. And the stars I'm just going to have go sprinkling off. I think they're so cute. And I may cut off more bubbles. Not quite sure yet. We just have to see how we're feeling as we go. Now my pumpkins, some of my biggest embellishments. So I like to start, you know, biggest to smallest if I can, but I also want a nice little amount of, you know, the bottles and all that stuff on both sides. This side will get more embellishments. I mean, come on guys, look at how cute. So cute. Oh, I've got more bottles under here too. So let me do a couple and I'll pop all kinds of dimensional adhesive and all that kind of stuff up as we go. But I thought I'd show you guys where I'm vibing on this. I've got these cute little scullies to tuck in. They're kind of hilarious. And then let's see, maybe three little pumpkin sizes. That might be super cute. Have my little scully peeking out, filling in that gap. Some bubbles, kind of looks like the bubbles are just coming up from here though. No, that's not what I wanted it to do. I wanted them to be separate. I'm gonna build out this side, get them all popped up on dimensional adhesive. I have my little star bits to use kind of as enamel dots that will also pop around. And then I'm just gonna finish it off with using both of these as enamel dots and let them dry. But I'm gonna show you what this looks like and we'll come back and do a few dots. All right, y'all, let's finish up this project together. I'm gonna to come in just a little bit more. All right, let's try to go ahead and get a couple little dots on here, which I'm going to go ahead and consider these like cute little enamel dots. Let's see, one right here. So nice little finishing bits. And then I'll go ahead and flick the bottom of the page and it's going to kind of flatten out that little like, you know how sometimes you get like the twirly like on an ice cream? It'll go ahead and flatten that out just a little bit for me. Put one here. Cute, 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 cute. And right here. I'm gonna do the same thing. This was the Maker's Magic in White Pearl. And then I'll do the same thing with the clear glitter, which guys, these are so fun to play with. Come on, here we go. Put one right outside that one. Little one right there. Just have little groupings. a bigger one there. And then a bigger one right here and a little one. Now, if one of them doesn't cooperate to your liking, you can just scrape it off with your thumb. It's not a big deal. So what I meant by flicking it from the bottom is you know how some of them get kind of a little point on it. If you just, oops. <laughs> Flick it from the bottom, they will round out very, very nicely for you. 
Thank you guys so much for letting me play along with you. I have had so much fun creating this and putting together a layout with these great supplies. Bye for now.